Hi guys, it's Becky, and today I am going to finish up my full sets for this week for my full set February challenge. I already made necklaces with these four different bead bundles and bead boxes. I made bracelets with, again, the same bead bundles and bead boxes. And today I'm going to make earrings and rings. So ear rings and finger rings. We're going to do all the rings. So we're going to be doing that. And the bundles and bead boxes that I'm working with are the February Bargain Bead Box. This is the Budding Romance collection. And I have already made a necklace and a bracelet with these. And I'm going to be using some of the components from this to make earrings and uh, rings. Um, what I'm using from here is for the ring, I'm going to be using these little flower um, spacers, a couple of these small garnety guys, and then for the earrings, I'm just going to use one of these rondelles. It's the Malaysia Jade rondelles. One of these small garnety guys. And two of these flower bead caps. And that's for the earrings. And this is for each earring, I should say. So I'm, I'm using those. And then I'm also using these little cubic zirconia drops as well that's going to be part of the dangle and this is what that earring will look like when we make it and I'll show you how I put that together when I get to that part of the tutorial so that's what I'm using from the bargain bead box and then these others are bundles and the bundles are things that the bead box bargains store it's the sister site for bargain bead box they put these together and they're usually very limited amounts um, and this was the Be My Valentine bundle that I got at the beginning of the month. And I've already made a necklace with this and a bracelet. And we're going to make some rings with some of these components and some earrings. And for the earrings, I'm using one of these matte Malaysia Jade rounds. I am using some of these dark red heart-shaped beads, these check glass hearts. I'm using some of these heart-shaped spacers and I'm using a couple of these, they're like four millimeter rondelles. And I'm using that for the earring. And then for the ring, I'm just going to be using, I'm gonna be doing a fairly simple ring and I'm just gonna be using these two heart beads for that. And um, this is what the earring is going to look like. And this is one of the reasons why when I was uh, saying I always keep the little spare bits of, of uh, soft flex wire when I cut it off, it's because you don't need very much of it and you can make an earring with it. Um, so that's what the earring is going to look like and I'll show you how to do that when we get there. But yeah, the Budding Romance box. I will put a link to each of the unboxings for these in the description below so you can see what all came in those bundles. Um, again, they're limited amounts, so the bundles sell out pretty fast when they go up, um, but some of the components might still be available for purchase at their site. And then this was the companion bundle for the Galaxy of Gems, which was the bargain bead box for January. And so I loved this. I loved the bargain bead box for January, and I loved this, and I'm really glad that I took a chance to add this to the collection so that I could start making some things with it. So I made a necklace and a bracelet with that. And what I have pulled out of this for the rings is I'm going to be using one of these wavy disc beads, one of these little lentils, and for the earrings, I'm pulling together like my sort of disparate makes between my um, my necklace and my bracelet by grabbing some beads from each of those and putting them together for my earring. So I've got one of these like dyed agates. It's faceted and I think that's 10 millimeter. Might be, yeah, 10 millimeter, one of those. We have an eight millimeter carnelian and I chose swirly ones with some platter some planety things on them then we've got some wavy spacers sandwiching some of these small crystal beads that are about three millimeter crystals 
So that's what I'm using for the earring to go with those. And then the final bundle that I'm going to be working from was the Fuchsia Flowers bundle. It was one of the more recent bundles that they put up and it has these gorgeous pink and black dyed agates. It had these like uh, purpley mauve -y sort of color beads. We had just tons of pinks and all of that. So what I did for the earrings is I went ahead and grabbed one of these purple beads, one of these decorative spacers, and a small version of the dyed agate. And then I'm just going to be using one of these larger ones for the ring. So that's that's the only bead that I'm going to be using for the ring. And that's what I pulled out of here for that um, for that big. So, I mean, there, there were other options that I could have used for rings. I honestly think that these would be great as a ring. These little uh, flowers, they would be really fun to make. But I'm going to, it's part of the set, so I'm going to be using one of the beads that I used in the, um, in the other designs for that. Now, as far as other materials, I have a head pin for two of my designs. And we're just going to be doing really simple earrings where we stack the beads on the head pins, make a loop on the end, and that's that's what we're making. Um, for this one, I'm going to be using some 20 gauge wire to make a link that we attach our drop to. And then for this one again, it's just my leftover soft flex. It's this red garnet color soft flex. And then there's going to be a um, a crimp feed that I'm going to be using to crimp my wire for that. I've got some ear wires that were already made up. And then for the actual um, rings, I'm going to be using 20 gauge wire again. I've checked to make sure that all of the beads will fit on this wire. Um, only one of them would have fit on an 18 gauge and that's this one, but I'm just using the one gauge of wire. So I've got some gold and I've got some silver. Um, but I am going to be using a little bit of 26 gauge wire, like just a couple of inches of it for this ring here. So I'm gonna set that over here. And the tools that I'm using, I have a ring mandrel for sizing on the rings, but if you don't have a ring mandrel, what you can do is you can find a ring that fits you and then look around your house for things that that will fit onto that you can easily remove it from. Like this lipstick tube, it's an Urban Decay lipstick tube. It fits my finger just perfectly right here on this fat part of the lipstick tube. Not here at the end, but just right here where it gets a little bit fatter in the middle. And so this would be a really good thing, and I have actually used it before, in order to make rings on it before I went and bought myself a mandrel. If you do use something that is not purpose-built as a mandrel, I do not suggest that you do any hammering on it just so you don't shatter the plastic or the glass if that's what you end up using. For tools, I've got my magical crimper for doing my crimp bead on this earring. I have my flush cutter for cutting both my beading wire and my craft wire. And I've got some chain nose pliers and some round nose pliers for forming my wire. So that's what I'm going to be making with. Right. And, oh, I knew there was something I wanted to do before I got started, and that was to find my gold crimp beads. Could not find my gold ones. Still, I had just one that I used for making this with, but I do have a little silver one, and I'm just, I'm fine with it being a different color just for this, the, the demonstration's sake. So let's get these guys out of the way. And I think what I want to do is... Do the earring and then the ring and then move on to the next one. So let's make this earring and then we'll, or do I want to change gears in the middle of it? Earrings first, then we'll go back and do rings. Okay, so earrings first. 
So for this, we've got our beading wire and you can do this with craft wire. It's just, you're going to have to actually form it into this U shape and then make a little loop on the end. And you can totally do it that way. That would be fine. Um, but it's really simple to make an earring this way like this. And I'm just gonna show you how easy it is just to pop it onto an ear wire and wear it like that. So what we're gonna do is take our earrings and when you do one of these, like I like it to be symmetrical on either side of this, where you've got your center bead is your heavier bead, and then you've got a few beads up the side that kind of frame it. Um, so the easiest way to do that is just to go ahead and string these on your wire, put your center bead in the middle, and then start putting the other beads on each wire on either side. And the order that I went in for this was the heart beads first. And I strung them with the points down towards the, um, or the bottoms of the hearts towards the large bead and the, the roundy parts up towards the top. And then as a spacer between these hearts, between these different colors of hearts, I've got these rondelles. If I can find the hole, Boy, that's going to be my challenge today is finding the hole on any of these beads. Also probably trying to keep things within view so you guys can see what I'm doing. All right. And then we stack the other ones on the other side. And these just not, they don't need to be centered because uh, putting it together, there's going to necessarily be some asymmetry on it. I'm just going to scooch this over a little bit because I do want a long and a short side. Not too long and not too short, but just so I know which side is going to go back through the crimp bead and which side is not. So I'm going to just take both of these ends and put them, the crimp bead, on both of those. And because I've already made one of these, I'm going to hold it up next to it so that I can make sure that I get this the right size. <laughs> so they so they match and are even. Because even though, you know, there's going to be a whole head between, with a face on it and everything, between the ears that these are on, I still would like them to be somewhat matched. And yes, I know I've got a different color of crimp bead, but that is fine with me for right now. I just want to get this made is that too loose too tight not enough okay the top one needs to be a little bit smaller and this one needs to be a little bit looser so you want to do your adjusting for sizes and making sure it matches before you crimp it and now I'm just going to crimp this using my magical crimper, which is my favorite way of crimping. Because you've got this little concavity that smushes down the corners of the crimp. It's like the middle of the crimp remains loose and easy, but it's the edges that get smushed down. And it's the act of opening it, rotating it, and closing it again that smushes down all of those edges and gives you a rounded, smooth little ball of crimp that holds really, really well. It works best on a two by two crimp tube. That's what it was designed to do it with. And with thicker wire like this medium wire, uh, the 0.019 wire. So something that has 0.018 or 0.019 is gonna be your best bet for using with this type of crimper. And I really like it because then I don't have to use crimp covers and the crimp becomes part of the design. So I've got my earrings. Let's move on to the next earring. I'm gonna put this away because I don't need it anymore. And my next earring is just a little stack of beads and things on a wrapped loop link. And since this is going to be just 
just straightening it out a little bit with my fingers before I cut it off. Since this is going to be um, attached to a dangle that has a jump ring, I'm not going to mess around with attaching it first. I can if I want to, and usually I would if I have a dangle, but since it has a jump ring, I'm just gonna leave it and attach it later just to make it a little bit easier on me. So about the middle, it's not gonna take up that much space. And bend this back this way. And I usually like to use my um, veil making pliers when I do wrapped loops, just because I get really consistent sizes with it. But I'm just using these today. For no other reason than I just don't feel like getting my veil making pliers out. <laughs> Like sometimes the reason to use a specific tool could just be because you, you don't feel like doing it a different way. So I'll walk through my, uh, my second loop when I get to that one. I just wanted to go ahead and make this first wrapped loop. And I'll explain what I'm doing when I get to the next one. All right, so now I've got this one. The bottom of my loop is going to be down here, or maybe it'll be the top. Let's yeah, maybe we'll do that as the top. So the top of this one is going to be this three millimeter Jemmy Rondell. And then we've got some bead caps. I want my bead caps to be surrounding and cradling this larger Rondell. So I wanted my curvy end to be pointing up towards it. And now on the other side, I want my curvy end pointing towards that guy still. So I'm gonna put it on going the other way, just so that we have a nice little cradle for it. All right, now I'm looking at this and I want both of my hoops, both of my loops facing the same direction so that the dangle hangs correctly. So since when I hold it this way, I look at the, the face of my circle. I want to turn it so it just looks like a line. And then I'm going to pinch the wire right here up at the top. And I want to leave some room for wrapping. So I'm going to bend this over the top of that for my first bend. And the reason you do a bend is so that your loop is centered on the wire. If you don't do the bend and you make a loop, it'll be like off to the side. It'll look like a P or a Q instead of like a lollipop. So then I put my round nose pliers right there on top of where the bend is. I'm just using my finger to push this around the top of that. And then I can open it and rotate it around so that I can bring it below the pliers. So the wire crosses like that. And now that I've got my lollipop shape on here and my wire is going at sort of a 90 degree angle from where the, uh, the straight wire here is, I can go ahead and grasp my loop and I can start wrapping. Now, if I was going to be attaching this to something before wrapping it, I'd want to swing this open like you do a jump ring and attach it and then swing it closed before I started doing my wrapping. But since I'm not doing that, I'm doing just kind of lazy, lazy making with this. I can bring this around and wrap this down here. And once it's all wrapped, we can cut off the excess. straighten these guys out and I can attach my dangle to this bottom loop and I can attach a ear wire to the top loop and I'll have a pair of earrings so let's open up this jump ring um hold on I gotta find the the open part of this jump ring. Hold on. Because did I make a mistake? Am 
Now they hit it real good, didn't they? Aha, uh -huh, I found it. I think. Let's find out. There it is. Yeah, this is this is like a jump ring. All right. So I just twisted open the jump ring. I'm just using this to hold that open. Pop that guy on there. And this will hold it while I close it. And now I have finished my second set of earrings. And that is facing the wrong way. So let's turn it around. And now it's facing the correct way. So it's almost minimalist, but not quite. But they will look really great when I wear them with my necklace and bracelet and ring. All right, next set of earrings. For this, we're just going to stack some earrings onto a head pin. And I'm going for mixed metals because I used mixed metals in the... Um, in the necklace design. So I've got my silver ear wire and my gold head pin. And I'm just gonna stick with that because that's that's what we've been doing. So I've got all of these beads that I'm gonna stack right here. And let me pull this guy out so that I stack them in the same order. Um, at the bottom, I've got a small bead for some sparkle and depth. I have a wavy spacer and then I've got my swirly bead, my blue one, another wavy spacer, another small crystal, another wavy spacer, and my carnelian bead with all of these swirls on it. And then another tiny bead. Now I could probably have added a whole other wavy spacer at that point, but I feel like that might have been overkill on that. Um, these wavy spacers and these beads were all in my um, necklace design and these carnelians were in my bracelet design. So it makes it all come together. And for this, I'm gonna do a simple loop. So up here at the top, I'm going to bend my wire again at an angle before I make my loop because it will help center the loop. So it's at kind of a 90 degree angle from where I've got these spaced. And you can measure this out here. One centimeter is long enough for you to make a loop with. And I found from experience that if I hold my finger up against this bead where the it bends and I measure to the part of my finger where my fingernail ends, that's about one centimeter. So I don't have to hold it up to a measuring tool. I can just hold it up to my finger. Oof. And that just makes it a lot easier for me to make my loop, my simple loop. The great thing about these round nose pliers, I love these for simple loops, is that if I didn't cut off enough or if I cut off too much, I can just move the barrel of this up or down to readjust the size of my loop when I'm making it. So now I've got my simple loop, pop on my ear wire, and I have made my earrings. So these are all really simple earring designs, quick and easy because I need that today, <laughs> I need quick and easy. And then this one, again, I'm just going to be stacking some beads onto a, a, um, a head pin, making a simple loop and attaching it to an ear wire. So stacking these guys on here, let's make sure they're in the right direction. Got my head pin here, and this is a shorter head pin so I'm not actually going to need to, whoa, where are you going, buddy? I think the hole is a little bit big on this bead. I'm gonna swap it out for a bead with maybe a little bit smaller of a hole because that, that was a little on the ridiculous side. All 
I didn't have that problem with the other one that I made. Okay, that's not going anywhere. All right, that's good. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you need to do that um, if you've got inconsistent sizes of holes on your beads. So then I'm putting on my spacer on top of that bead and then my other bead on top of that. And you can see there's not a lot of room up here, so I don't actually have to cut that. I can go ahead and just bend it over. I'm just gonna show you that I, I literally do not need to cut that. <laughs> it's exactly the right length. And then I can grab my round nose pliers, make myself a loop. Straighten it out. I don't need a bendy loop. I mean, I do need a bendy loop, but I just want one bend in it, not like five or six bends. There we go. So I've got my little loop and then I can pop my ear wire on here and I have some earrings. All right, so we went from more complicated to a little less complicated to super not complicated on the earrings. So let's do the same thing, I guess. No, maybe a little bit. Um, this will be a very simple ring with these guys. This one will be a little more complicated. And then this one will be super simple. And this one will be just a little more complicated. Okay. So let's do, let's do the super simple one first, okay? Let's grab some wire. And for this one, you're gonna need quite a bit of wire. Like I say, measure with your heart and then add to it because your heart is wrong. Your heart is an idiot. Do you remember that one guy you were dating? Yeah, don't listen to your heart. Measure with accurate tools or just with safe in the knowledge that this is going to need to wrap several times around several things. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut off about 15 inches. That's, that's going to be a very decent amount. And again, I'm just using my fingers. I had a tip from somebody who said, grab an old t-shirt and use it to straighten your wire. Um, I do have old t-shirts, but I don't have them right here next to my desk. So <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do it like this. All right. There we go. Now, because this is a fairly large wire, I'm just gonna show you an example of, of this is basically what I'm gonna be making, is this type of ring, where it's got the big bead right there on the top, and then we wrap it around and around and around. So I'm gonna find the middle of this. It's about the middle right there. That'll work. I'm gonna slide this guy on here. And then I'm gonna bend down there, like that. Because I'm gonna want the ring to wrap. I'm gonna want it to wrap around this from here as the bottom instead of having it sit weirdly. So, just judging by where this ends. Let me grab my, my pliers. I'm gonna bend this out that way. Uh, we're gonna go in here and bend that way. And now I can wrap around my mandrel. So if I put this down here on this mandrel. I'm gonna pinch the sides and bring these up around the back side. And this is again a super simple ring. I'm gonna bring it up across there. up across the other side. And I'm just gonna leave it on the mandrel and start wrapping around the ring, but I'm gonna scooch it down a little bit because I like it to actually fit. All right. So I'm 
I'm just wrapping around here this way. I'm going to tuck this guy in. Here. You know, I think this might be one of the scenarios where a bent nose plier might be easier for me to maneuver with. I know lots of people love them for things, but I just want to tuck that guy in so that, that end is. out of the way. There we go. Tucked. And now I can wrap this guy up. I'm just going to keep going up and up and up around the rest. Whoop. There we go. Let me see if I can get this end tucked in somewhere nicely. Maybe it would work better if I just snip it right here. And tuck that in there. Oof. Yes. Good going, Bex. All right. Now, I can work hard on this if I need to by hammering on it, but for right now, I'm going to call it good and put it over here with this for my finished ring. All right, so that was the easiest one. Second easiest one is going to be this one. So we're starting from, from like easiest to, you know, next hardest to next hardest for those. So for this one, we're going to be maybe not measuring as much. I think probably 12 inches will do for this ring. And again, this is 20 gauge wire. All right, yeah, that'll do. About that much. Yeah, cause we're not gonna be wrapping it as much for this, but again, we are gonna start right from the middle at the center with our beads. So let me get all of these on here. I'm going to do these smaller rondelles, one of these flower spacers, and then a smaller rondelle. Find the middle. And now I'm going to wrap it around my mandrel. I'm trying to pinch my beads where they are so they're not sliding around. I'm going to bend that around both ends. Until we get it right here. little bit of a bend right in the come on buddy right here next to this guy. I'm going to 
this guy on this side, bent the other way. Alright, I'm pulling it off because I think this might work better. here. Okay. I'm going to bend that that way. This one this way. I'm going to cut some of this wire off because it is too much. I would like it. Please be available for wrapping. I'm just going to hold this end next to where this bend is. Not too close. Right there, so that I can bend this around the ring. And again, this is probably a good place where a. Do I have one? Uh huh, I do. Okay, you are a mess. You're a mess. Gonna hold this here. And I'm gonna hold this here. So I've got both of these. Do not rotate. Stay there. Okay. Okay, I'm going to get three wraps out of this before I move on to the other side. When I do get to the other side, I'm going to fix my wires. So that is a little... A little bit crappy, but that's okay. It's meant to be a very simple ring, and I need to fix these wires so that they are straighter on the other side. There we go. Let's put this back on the mandrel, fix this other side. Make sure that it is going to be nice and straight. Mm -mm -mm. It is crossing over. There we go. I don't want it crossing over. I want it to be parallel to this other one right there. It is just bent at the wrong place. 
So let's do it here instead. So that there's some room for wrapping between it and the beads. All right. Get my finger on that. Let's go ahead and hold this in place. extra so it'll swing between and now I can start wrapping it Boy, this is fiddly. Wait till I get to the next one. <laughs> Just kidding, it probably won't be as fiddly as this. finished wrapping. All right, and now we have a very simple ring to go with our simple earrings. Woo. All right. Whew, that was fun. All right. I'm, I'm trying new things, guys. <laughs> like, all right. We had something super easy. We had something not quite as easy. This one might be a little easier, in fact, after, after the fact. I'm not gonna wrap this twice around here, so I'm only gonna cut off about eight inches of wire for this next one. And this end is my flush end. It's already cut flush, so I don't need to do that. But I'm going to make just a teeny tiny swirl right here at the end tiniest swirl. Um, I'm going to hold on to this and bend this up like that. And I'm going to put this lentil right there and then this wavy spacer right there you know what I probably should have done this with the the silver wire because hold on I I'm, I'm gonna use this again for somewhere else I'm gonna grab that silver wire because I was doing mixed metals and this has a gold cast to it so it'll look great with the silver wire doing more mixed metal. So let's start that all over again. I'm going to cut off about seven to eight inches of wire and make sure we've got a flush cut end. I'm going to start a teeny tiny swirl, just a tiny swirl. Just something to go around. Okay. 
going around. Doesn't even need to go around all the way. Just a little bit of a swirl. I'm gonna hold onto it with the pliers and bend it straight up. Maybe. And now I'm gonna put these guys on here. It's got those gold tones. It'll give me that same mixed metal feeling with the silver wire. I'm happy to do it that way. All right, so we've got our lentil and then our little wavy disc bead like this. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna treat this like it's gonna be a wrapped loop, only the loop is going to be ring sized. So to do that, I'm gonna grasp this right next to the bead and I'm just going to fold this over the top of that like I would for doing a wrapped loop. And now instead of wrapping around like uh, um, my round nose pliers or my bill making pliers, I'm gonna wrap it around my ring mandrel. Bloop, 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 bloop. I'm gonna make sure it goes crosses all the way under there like that. And I can actually even start wrapping it while it's on the mandrel. I'm just gonna go all the way up here to where that is and then wrap down and then back up again so that we have ourselves a nice thick wrap holding our little ring platformy. Pull that guy off. Yeah, I think this one was actually easier than the second one that I did, probably. <laughs> that is gonna catch on everything, but it looks really cool, doesn't it? <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. Ah, uh, look how like topsy-turvy it is. It's all swirly and, and wobbly. Uh, that's, that's fantastic. <laughs> that's a fun ring. I had a lot of fun making that just now. That was great. Okay, and now I've got my hearts. And for this, I am going to be bringing in that 26 gauge wire that uh, I was talking about before. And I've got my 20 gauge wire. And for this, I'm going to do another seven or eight inches. Oh, Natalie, she's making noises. And she's laying on the bed with her paws up in the air and, and rolling around. That's one of her favorite things to do. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and wrap here and this part where this overlaps. That part right there. Let me get, let me get my tape because I'm going to be doing some wire wrapping right there just for a little bit of it. So let me grab my tape. Um, my masking tape, I just have it. Oh, you'd think so, sweet lady. Okay, I had tape and then I didn't. So what did I do with it? You know what I'm gonna do instead? Okay, I've got it right here and where it crosses. This is where I want to wrap it. So I'm gonna hold this here. That's not a good marker for that. 
just gonna mark mark that right there I don't know if you guys can see it but I can see it but there's a little mark there so that when I take this off because it's gonna spring back I can squeeze these ends together and get that where I want it see my my marks if I squeeze my marks together then that's where I can hold it while I start wrapping so I'm just gonna put my wire here next to this other wire in my hands squeeze those two marks together hold on and start doing some wrapping. And I'm only wrapping just a small part of this ring. I'm gonna do like maybe a half a centimeter. This is why you don't need that much of this wire for this. All right. Now, wrap this side a little bit tighter. Now that I've got both of those wrapped, I'm just going to tamp down with this, on this with my pliers. And then give it a snip snap. There we go. Now I can bend this so it's a little bit straighter over there. And I'm going to bend this up so it's a little bit straighter over there, like that absolutely pop this back on my mandrel to make sure that it's a good size still perfect and I'm gonna put this guy right there facing away this little heart ring Do the same thing on the other side. Get our heart over here. Bending, bending, bending. Just figuring out where I want my hearts to be. There we go. That works for me. I'm just bending the top of it to help keep that heart where I want it to be just a little bit. I'm not going to do a huge bend over there like that. Because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little swirl. And I'm going to snip this so it is... I want these to be fairly equal lengths. I want them to be flush. Now I'm going to grab my round nose pliers and start twirling. And then after it gets to a certain point, you switch to your either flat nose pliers or some chain nose pliers or something that you can hold the pliers in while you form the, um, the wire 
around the swirl. Gently, gently. There we go. The swirl is going to supposedly help balance the heart out on that side. And now I want another swirl coming back the other way. Oh my goodness, Amar, are we almost done? <laughs> this is really fun. Okay, so after I'm done with this, I'm going to go do my makeup and get my hair looking good. And I will do a wrap up video for you guys for this week. Um, how I'm feeling about the challenge, what I've made, we'll do a little try on. And we'll talk a little bit about my plans for the rest of this challenge and how I'm going to try to make it more um, doable for me. Because, like, there's no point in doing a challenge that leaves you doing too much so that you are, like, neglecting things at home or not able to fulfill your obligations or things like that. And also, I don't want it to not be fun. I love having fun with making jewelry. <laughs> I love these two swirly guys. There we go. I think that's perfect for that Be My Valentine bundle. Ah. Uh, okay. So that was just an idea that I had that I came up with. And I was like, ooh, let's try it. And look how well it worked. Look how well that worked, you guys. I'm really happy about that. All right. So... I will see you guys for the wrap up when I show you all of these together. Um, I will have a playlist if you missed some of the other videos and you wanna watch me make those things. Um, but we've got all of our rings for ears and rings for fingers made to complete our full sets for this week's projects on my full set February challenge. All right, so I will see you guys at the wrap-up. Bye!